Hi, welcome to Trash Fest here at the High Falls Transfer Station. We have other venues, but this one, we're happy to show you around. So this is Skip LaPlante's Musical Waterfall. You take water, um, fill up a... We're at a transfer station, so it's noisy sometimes. You fill up your jug, uh -huh. then you pour the water down these channels, and it makes noise. So let's see, we'll use this channel. It takes a little while for the noise to start to happen. You see it goes... And what's really fun is when you have a number of people, because, you know, when there's just one person, you only get a little bit of noise. But if you had six people on all these channels, it would, it would, it's really fun when you have more than one player. And, you know, kids really get this, but guess what? I love it too. And going down that slide, in the bucket, you know, we'll do a little more. You, there's also the water collects in a kiddie pool at the bottom. We cleared this little trail. It was a little bit about using the wasted space of the transfer station in addition to the wasted materials. So, um, I love the visuals of this piece. It's just complete insanity and chaos. And Skip LaPlante has been making music um, on instruments that he's made himself from resource materials for 30 or 40 years. Um, he's really a master. And he's made these crazy waterfalls before. Um, they've been at some major museums, including PS1 in New York. And we're really glad to have it here. He worked really hard. He came and he... There were no ladders used in making this piece. He threw the ropes up using a, a weight and, you know, it's just madness. It's very fun to look at it from the bottom. So we can go and look at that too. Um, that's wonderful. We'll take a look from the bottom another time. Okay. So my funders were Arts Mid Hudson. Thank you so much. Um, also the town of Marvel Town gave a grant for this project. The sponsors were, were um, the League of Women Voters Materials Management Committee and the uh, Marvel Town Environmental Conservation Commission, ECC. Um, many people offered help, offered art, offered time, did work, um, and they're, it's wonderful. I'm moved by how many people came to, together to make this. So um, we have our trash dust sign. It's made out of uh, water bottles and water with food coloring. And it's not quite such a bright, shiny day today, but when it is, it really sparkles. Um, it's sparkling a little bit, so I'm glad that worked out. Um, we found that piece of art over there in the trash, and we liked it. We saved it. We're sorry somebody did not honor their art. Maybe they broke up with someone. I don't know. Anyway, it was in the garbage. We liked it a lot. We put a little. We put the red on. We thought it needed a little red, so we we took it to the next step, just a little bit. Um, that's part of Trash Fest now too. This is Alex Lyle over here. He's still working on his piece. Um, we're not sure what it's called yet, but we made this. Um, we made this. We found this wood. It's all um, pallets, uh, broken down shipping pallets. There is a huge pile of waste wood, and um, I thought it was junk. And Alex said, "It's incredible. I want it." So we. Where we asked the guys, they said take as much of it as you want, and uh, they chip it actually and sell it for mulch. Um, they were happy to let us have some, and here it is. Alex um, is a dancer, so his work has a lot of movement in it and a lot of space. I do a wide range of work actually. Um, some of my work is 
uh, sculptural like this, um, and some of it is more performance-based, um, and often the two come together, so I'll do a performance where there's an installation that uh, I do a performance in, and kind of my performance within the installation makes up what the whole work is. Something like this, this is actually movement that I had done, I had an idea of what, how I wanted it to fit in the space, so I did movement here, uh, and then I went back and then turned the movement back into a, into a sculpture. I have to tell you, I'm liking this. Cool, thank you. Very nice. I'm glad you like it. So thank you, and thank Welcome. you for speaking to us. Yeah. Thank you for coming out. Over there, we have a mural by Eugene Stetz. He's right here from High Falls, has lived here all his life. He's a serious muralist, a young man. I think he's still in his 20s. Um, he's, he's also creating a mural up at the top of the transfer station where the two uh, shipping containers are located. Um, but anyway, he's brought a lot of color and um, you know, bright shapes to the transfer station. And this will be permanent. Some of the other work um, is fragile and may not last that long, but this will be here for a very long time. So Super, very nice. So this is my piece. It is called Obsolete. Um, I think as I've mentioned, um, as an artist, I'm more of a dancer and a writer. Visual arts are sort of playful for me and I don't think of myself as a professional, although the other artists who are here are all professionals. Um, and this piece I made mostly um, because I wanted to do some education. And I'm using TVs which are um, an obsolete form at this point. And, and even written materials are a bit obsolete these days. But garbage is also obsolete. We don't have to have garbage. We can have resources that get made into other things when we're finished with them in one form. So um, I've used words. Um, the level here with the TVs are, that's more um, like facts and figures, the official version. And then here we have reflections on the mirrors, um, which are more personal to me and my journey through Trash Fest and through um, my life as, an, as a waste activist. So come and spend a little time and read if you have a chance. Um, and then I also made another piece here. <clears throat> and. Um, my purpose here was um, that we have this large stone here with an inscription that I think nobody notices ever. And so I just wanted to sort of call attention to it. Um, again, the idea being that there's so much that we never see. We just consider it sort of waste. It's wasted space, it's wasted materials. Someone took effort and made that. So I brought this over so that maybe people will come over here and read this inscription as well. It's just something very simple and I just, um, so the guys who work at the transfer station here, they were pulling things out of the garbage for us again and again. Every time I came here there was more stuff and it was really fun to see what they thought was interesting. So they pulled this cage out and I spray painted it gold um, and I just placed in it some natural um, materials, this wood and the, uh, the bark and the stone, and then some non-natural materials, the, the grate, if you see at the bottom, and the spring. So um, it's just a simple piece. So here we are at the League of Women Voters tent and Meryl Sunderland is busy at work. <laughs> yes. Tell us about what you're doing. Well, um, 
part of my crafting experiments earlier resulted in some empty plastic vials. And normally when you're done with your craft and you've used up your materials, you throw the containers away. And I'm thinking to myself, well that's wasteful, but everybody loves crafting. I thought maybe just take the containers and make artwork out of them. So I took one of the vials for the uh, litter and just started running some paint over it and as it went over the surface it started getting a streaky effect almost like wood or, or marble and then I started layering the colors to get almost like an aurora borealis effect and now I'm just throwing some glitter on there so now it can be a decorative you know item or you can keep beads in it if you want to and so zero waste crafting that's wonderful thank you you're welcome so she taught me Hi, my name is John Michelotti of Catskill Fungi. Um, I have a business where I take people in the woods and I teach them about mushrooms on guided mushroom walks. I also make these health tinctures that I make on my family farm from mushrooms I grow. I teach people how to grow mushrooms. And what I'm doing today is I'm taking trash that we all make on a regular basis and I'm growing mushrooms on it. So what I have here is the root structure of mushrooms growing on sawdust, as you can see, in this plastic bag. And this you can purchase online. Um, my favorite source is FungiAlly.com. That's my buddy Willie. And what I did here is I took my coffee grounds. And every morning after I make my coffee, I take my grounds and I put it in a jar. And then I take a little of this sawdust and I sprinkle it on top of that coffee grounds. And once the jar is full, this is this was done about a week ago, you might be able to see on that camera, but there's these little white filaments that are growing through the coffee grounds that eventually turn bright white and grow completely through this and then mushrooms will fruit out the top. These are blue oyster mushrooms that I will then take from what would have otherwise been trash and eat healthy food from. Um, you know what happens when your jeans go out of style? I'll tell you. You take the same stuff and you sprinkle it once you soak your jeans in water and you can grow mushrooms on your jeans too. That's what all that white is. Bringing your jeans back into style. Um, cardboard. There's plenty of cardboard out there. Once again, you soak the cardboard and there's sugars in the glues between the cardboard. And you can kind of see that white ropey stuff growing through. And this I can take and put in my garden and it'll help to break down and make healthy soil. You know, each mushroom kind of is helpful for a different benefit. But, you know, the, the possibilities are limitless. So I encourage you to go out, get a bag of oyster mushroom spawn and start growing mushrooms. When did you first develop this uh, interest and, and zest for mushrooms? Oh, years and years ago by going on a mushroom walk. I was uh -huh. out in the woods with Gary Linkoff and uh, he, 
He's uh, really an inspiring guy, inspiring teacher. And he kind of took me out and showed me what mushrooms are and, and, and why they're so exciting. And uh, are there any uh, visible signs you can tell us about that would indicate we shouldn't eat those mushrooms? Yeah, there's plenty of poisonous mushrooms out there, but there's no hard, fast rule on, you know, these are poisonous, these are edible. But when you are looking for edible mushrooms in the woods, have no fear that, you know, within your first year of learning how to identify mushrooms, you can, you can get uh, a good appreciation and understanding of, of five or six um, very common mushrooms that grow in our woods that are edible and delicious. But you should always be sure on what you're eating. You have to identify the species. You okay. can't just pick anything and eat them. But not just for eating. They're great for building healthy soil. They're great for you know the health of our plants so, and, and for making art. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Appreciate your being here yeah, today. Trash Fest. Yes. Yeah. Trash Fest Ulster. My display was a little running rampant, but that's okay. I'll clean it up a little bit.